Welcome back to SmartHelping.com. It's 2.40 p.m. on August 14th. Um, the financial model I'm doing today is interest rate swaps. Uh, it's pretty complicated. It's tough to get your mind around, but then once you've got it, it's pretty um, easy to understand. So the model here is a net present value calculator and so you're gonna get a valuation of the future cash flows of two different facilities one's a fixed rate and one's a variable rate so the only difference here is the interest rate over time that's it everything else is the same so the way these work um, generally companies do it if they want to try to get from a fixed rate to a variable or variable to fixed um, these are also derivatives that are traded. The reason why they can be traded is because nobody knows what the future variable rates will be and when they will change. So that's how um, you know different people have different views on the value based on what they think the future will be. Nobody knows. And because of that, a market could be created. Um, so in general, your value is going to be based on when the um, and generally uh, the variable rate is based on a fixed premium percentage plus LIBOR and LIBOR is the London Interbank something rate that's just the variable rate and that changes you know you can look let's see if we go to Google here You can look up LIBOR, you can get it from bank rate and just see you know what the current is, one year LIBOR LIBOR, uh one point eight one percent. And we can also look up historicals and you can see charts and everything. But that's where you'd find that information. So if we put that in here, starting library at one point eight one percent. Now what we've done is just made two schedules and it's all variable based on the payment date, notional amount, and interest rates, uh, payment schedules, annual payments, how many years the swap will last for, and then some other variables we'll go through. Um, so basically looking at a high level view of an interest rate swap, uh, it's based on the notional amount and that amount's not exchanged at all so you have say 25 million dollars um, and based on that 25 million you pay an interest rate and let's say if we're doing a monthly uh, payment schedules every month um, and we're treating these we're treating these like bonds so the principal notion amount is not going to change at all uh, so if we do a monthly we'll say okay every month uh, the fixed rate is 4%, so let's just put this in an easy number. Let's say this is a million dollars. Um, okay, so a 4% interest rate means every year you're going to pay um, $40,000. Now you divide that by 12 to get what you're going to pay a month. So whatever 40000 divided by 12, that's your monthly payments that's what you're gonna pay every single month for the life of the contract of the interest rate swap and that has a value and a net present value so here in this case it's three hundred eighty two thousand if we have a monthly uh... payment schedule for twenty five years and i've done actual payments here you'd actually pay a um, million dollars on the fixed side and if you see on the fixed, it is $3,333 a month. And it just so happens that if you do that for 300 months, it equals the f uh, actual full amount of the principal. Obviously, if we change this to, say, 20 years, all this changes now. It's 800000 for the fixed cash flow, and that present value of that is... 358. 
and I'll tell you why the net present value has to be used here in a second but so that's how the fixed rate is calculated so this is saying okay um, I will give you um, I will pay you the interest payments with assuming um, I borrowed a million dollars from you and all that's going to change hands is the interest payments only not the principal so you're paying this counterparty um, three thousand dollars a month every month and then they're gonna pay you a variable rate and the difference is really the amount um, well you know, each one pays the leg but the difference is gonna be within that effect of who profits and losses on this over time and that won't be known until you know the future until this is done and we we figured out what the LIBOR rates were for all the periods it, obviously we don't know that going into it we can just make assumptions so okay so I'm gonna pay someone three thousand dollars a month for the next and that's a monthly schedule for the next 240 months and then they're gonna pay me every month a variable rate and let's say they think uh, LIBOR is gonna go down so they're going to pay me a 1% premium plus whatever LIBOR is. So uh, here's the 1%. And then let's say LIBOR is 1.81. And they think that LIBOR is going to go down. Let's say you think it's going to go down 0.035% every period. Well, now look at things have definitely changed here. Um and you can also pick when you think that change is going to happen so if you think LIBOR is going to change in the X amount of months in the future you can pick that month and that will affect the net present value and that's the whole reason the net present value allows you to take into account when you think the variable rates will change so here we say well I don't think I think the LIBOR rate is going to go down but I don't think it's going to go down until April 24th so until then, um, my assumption is 1.8% plus 1%. So the amount that they're going to pay me, so remember, I'm paying them 3000 I'm paying them $3,000 a month. They're going to pay me $2,342 a month. So their, their, their assumption is LIBOR is low and it's going to stay low and it's actually going to get lower. You can see now we've got it starting to drop even lower with uh, the assumption. It actually gets negative there, which is not realistic. But we can just change this. Say put it at 1, 0, 5. and there and you can obviously go in here and this is just the expected LIBOR which I've just done is it's 1.81 percent which is whatever you started at and then based on the month you it cha starts changing by this amount up or down now you can go in and build your own schedule of what you think LIBOR is going to be in the future in each period and just put that in now based on the period so say if it was um, I've done this so you can do monthly payments you could do quarterly you see quarterly now uh, the payments have gone up it's now 10,000 a month instead of what I had it at monthly was 3,333 which makes sense so, so I'm paying now 10,000 every quarter if I'm paying the fixed rate to them and then they're paying the variable rate to me which is only 7,000 a quarter now and it starts to go down so they're obviously thinking they're gonna profit because they think the LIBOR is gonna go down and stay down and therefore you know I've done the, these are all formulas here the profitable leg to be paying would be the floating leg so whoever's paying the floating leg at this point has a better value based on the assumptions and whoever is paying the fixed leg is unprofitable to sell or to pay which would be me in this case now let's change things around let's say um, this is their assumption let's say my assumption is different let's say I think LIBOR is going to start going up by 0 0.03 percent 
and not increase by 0.03%, but actually the rate changes by 0 0.03 uh, percentage points. So if you look at that fixed leg, that means it goes from, or the variable leg, it goes from, uh, well, let's say we think that's going to start happening right now. Um, it goes from 1.81, 8.4, 9, so it's actually increasing by that much percentage points, basis points. Okay, anyway, so now let's say, so I think, so we just did their valuation, and they think that LIBOR's going down, so they want um, to pay me LIBOR, why pay them a fixed rate. Now let's say, I say, okay, fine, I want to pay a fixed rate, but I think LIBOR's going up by 0.03%. Well, now, the amount that I'm getting, it's closer, it's still in the favor of them, so let's say, um, let's say I think it's going to go up by 0.05%. Now it just switched over, and you can see that switch. Now it's actually profitable to pay the fixed leg, so that's me paying them 10000 every quarter, and then they're paying me 7000 a quarter, but then look, it starts to go up. 10, 12, 13, 16000 a quarter. So non-discounted, obviously, um, it's profitable the fixed leg is the best one to pay. You'd be making $160,000 profit. The net present value, though, is only really a $17,000 difference. And the, you have to look at the net present value because, yes, these are increasing, but by the time my assumption, based on my assumption, the time that they actually get to a point where they get higher, it the time value of that takes uh, it discounts. And we're doing it at, here. You can put in any discount rate. I just put 10%. So now, you know, even though these these cash flows in the future are higher 16,000 than these 10,000 ones, they are discounted back and since they're not starting to get higher for later, the value goes down. So what I want to see is well based on my thinking of LIBOR going up, um is it still makes sense for me to try to enter this trade. And here it does, not by much, but it does. Let's say Let's say I think LIBOR is going to start increasing by 0.1 percentage point every period. And right now, whoops, right now a period is, is every um, quarter, which means four payments. So you also would gauge your expected LIBOR percentage change based on what if you're doing monthly or quarterly. So if I'm doing quarterly, I think every quarter is going to go up by this. If I were to say monthly, I might want to lower that um, to fit a line with my assumption. So now we're saying 0 0.01, and now a little bit. Now it's saying just a little bit more room. So non-discounted 159 discounted difference is 82,000. So it's saying yes. If I pay 10,000 a quarter, and I receive this variable LIBOR, um, it's beneficial to me to do that. So I want to swap interest rates and with this do this contract with this company. So the, you can see all the different variables you can plug in here, and this will affect, you know, the value of each leg. And based on the value of each leg, you would either want to be the one paying it or not paying it. And it goes both ways, and anybody can buy or sell. Usually you do this with a bank, but you could do it with another company. Um, doesn't matter. The, the logic is the same. One person pays a fixed rate to another, and then the person who's paying the fixed rate would receive a different variable rate. And those cash flows back and forth all have different net present values based on all this stuff. Uh, so we did a chart here. This, just, this shows the accumulated net present value and how that changes. So here the accumulated net present value for the variable rate is lower. Um, than the fixed. And so we get to the value of 278.8, which should match this, which it does, and then the value on the fixed, which is 359. Alright, let's see if we get to the end of it. 361, 497, which is that. Right. And that's saying, well, the 
total amount of money that is paid to the variable is less than the total amount of money that's paid to um, the fixed cash flow. So here, obviously, what do you want? Do you want to pay more or less? You want to be paying less, so that means you want to um, receive the fixed rate and pay the variable rate. And overall, you know, according to the assumptions, that would mean you make money over time. And that's that money you make is the valuation we're doing here. Alright, that's about as in-depth as I can get with this. I've tried to make as many assumptions as possible editable so that you can really um, easily change um, what you think is going to happen in the future and then see what the values look like based on that. If you want to purchase this model, it's just going to be a mid-level model, so that's a one-time fee of $45, um, and I'll send it to you. If you want me to do specific analysis for whatever situation you're in and that requires time on my end beyond the scope of what this does, um, my hourly rate is $50 an hour. I don't plan on changing that for quite a while. Maybe, you know, five years, but $50 an hour is what you can expect and I'll help you with whatever you want. Um, we can get on Skype however you want to do it. Um, the model will be on smarthelping.com so you can just click on the link in, in the description box below and it will take you to the page where you can check out um, and, and buy this uh, template. Alright, that's all I got for you today and I'll see you on the next one.